10 seconds and counting. The challenger was ready to fly. T minus 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. The shuttle goes higher into the atmosphere. Everyone watches carefully. It has been flying for 70 seconds. And the last words heard on the tape recorder is an uh oh from the pilot. At 72 seconds, an explosion is heard. People look up only to see a cloud of dust. The Challenger is nowhere to be seen. And the crew is gone forever. The Challenger was the second shuttle orbiter to fly into space. The shuttle Columbia was the first shuttle orbiter. 72 seconds into its mission, it was destroyed when its right side solid rocket booster had a burn through its side. Seven people were killed in the disaster. They included the commander, Dick Scobie, the pilot, who was Mike Smith, the mission specialists included Judy Resnick, El Onizuka, and Ron McNair. The payload specialists included Krista McAuliffe and Greg Jarvis. The Challenger didn't actually really blow up, like everyone says. It was actually destroyed in a structural breakup caused by leaking hot gas about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit from its right side solid rocket booster. Each booster is 150 feet long and weighs nearly 1.3 million pounds. Because of that, it is impossible to ship it in one piece from Utah, where the factory is located, to Florida, where the launch pad is located and its shuttle is waiting. So, they are shipped by train to the Space Center. Once there, they are stacked on top of each other and bolted together. A pair of rubber O-rings inside the joint is needed to prevent the fire from leaking out. The O-rings are in the shape of a circle. The rubber may not be able to withstand the heat, but it doesn't need to because several inches of insulating material separate the O-rings from the fire. If the seal works properly, then the guests know where to go except through the bottom. That's why NASA placed two rings. But if both ever leak, the hot gas will travel to the rubber, melt it, and begin to melt the steel casing. This is what happened aboard the Challenger. The NASA team thinks that the t cold temperatures at the time of the launch, about 36 degrees Fahrenheit, caused the rubber O-rings to become stiff and lose their ability to seal. When the shuttle was ready to launch, a cloud of smoke was seen, but no one had realized until... Kaboom! The shuttle was no more. Nobody aboard the shuttle knew about the leak. And not even mission control on you. There are no sensors to warn of a leak. The only photos showing the leak were developed many hours after the tragedy. The button to remove the SRBs could not have been used because the only time they are used is when they have to get rid of the burned out boosters. The external tank separate button also could not have been used. Most engineers believe that if the if the button was pressed while the SRBs were still thrusting, the shuttle would be peeled off the tank and immediately flipped out of control. It would spin into the ocean and the astronauts would still be killed. This shows that the SRBs must work. Many people believe that the crew survived the explosion. It's impossible to know. But even if they survived the explosion, it would have been impossible to survive water impact. The cockpit hit the surface at about 200 miles per hour. This is no more survivable than driving a car into a brick wall at the same exact speed. The crew didn't have pressure suits to help them. The crew didn't have a bailout system either. Beginning with the Challenger, NASA stopped putting bailout systems in the shuttles. Now they have an effective bailout system that can be used in any case. They strap backpacks with parachutes and go out a side hatch. To avoid hitting the shuttle swing, they slide down a pole and parachute back down. NASA didn't reinstall the two ejection seats that they originally had because then only two members would be safe while the others would still be trapped. To do otherwise is to imply that some lives are more important than others. Now NASA has made changes to the shuttle booster designs. They have redesigned the segment joints, which are much stiffer. They have added a third O-ring and finally added heaters to keep them warm on chilly days. The Challenger is located on an abandoned missile silo in Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. People might say that other astronauts were lucky not to have flown on the Challenger. But, but remember, every flight before the Challenger had flown with the same flawed booster design. So I consider that the tragedy will mark history and prove that mistakes are made and fixed.
The Challenger and its crew will always be remembered, and they will have a spot in history to remind everybody.